power does not travel in words. But power is the result of relationship. The power comes after the result of the relationship you experience with the Holy Spirit. And there's a seek of power intimacy. Jesus had that incredible experience with his Father that gave him the ability to be able to fulfill the will of his Father. We've come so far, but now there remains incredible spiritual strongholds that can only be penetrated by the supernatural. We have got to rise up to a higher level of strategic spiritual warfare that will demolish the last stronghold of Satan in this last hour, we are going to have to have a supernatural manifestation. The power will only come after we have an experience with the Holy Ghost. God didn't ask you to do it in your own strength. He said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. What I'm going to put in your mouth, you're going to root out. You're going to tear down. You're going to pull down. Don't you dare try until you get my word in your mouth. They filled Jesus with his humanity, with the Holy Ghost. And that's why you and I have got to have the same Holy Ghost if we're going to do the same work. There's a family waiting for you to witness. There's a church there that's dead, that's waiting for somebody with resurrection life and resurrection power, with the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. God didn't ask you to do it in your own strength. He said, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. Well, I feel Jesus in this place. I want to welcome you today to Live from Legacy. What an incredible impartation, breakthrough, anointing that Morris Cirillo is taking us into this week on Live from Legacy. Somebody say, I am one with the God of miracle signs and wonders. I want you to know something, my brother, my sister, as we go back today to reconnect to this impartation, I want to remind you the greatest battle over your life is what you believe about God and what you believe God believes about you. I'm going to say it again because today, Brother Cirillo is taking us into a message of the power of faith over the power of fear. I want to say it again, the greatest battle over your life is what you believe about God and what you believe God believes about you. The first three words Satan spoke in the Garden of Eden to Eve was, has God said? My brother, my sister today, I want to tell you we serve a God who speaks to people today. Yesterday, Brother Srilla reminded us the incredible prophecy. Somebody say, God said. Come on, go ahead and say, God said. Don't look to the bigness of your need. I know that you're facing big needs. I'm facing big needs today. But God said, don't look to the bigness of your need. Look to the bigness of your God. That's what we're doing this week in Miracle Power Living. 
We talked about how that miracles are not just momentary experiences, but Brother Srilo is teaching us that we can live in a rhythm of miracles, a rhythm of the presence of God. God sent Israel out of Egypt. I love yesterday how Brother Srilo reminded us that he was there in the pillar of cloud. He was there in the pillar of fire. He wasn't far off in heaven. He is in heaven, but he is also right by your side. He's right by the side of every man, every woman that's watching today. And God said, don't look to the bigness of your need, but look to the bigness of your God because your circumstances are hindrances to seeing my abilities. I said the greatest battle over your life is what you believe about God and what you believe God believes about you. But I love this promise. I want to encourage you to get the God said bookmark, the God said plaque. It's on the Facebook page. It will be something you'll want to put in front of you every day of your life. If you keep your eyes on your circumstances, the devil will use your circumstances to defeat you and accuse the word of God. I tell you, there's a voice over your life. It's the voice of the accuser, but there's a greater voice over your life. It's the voice of thus saith the Lord. It's the voice of the intercessor. And then I love this. Somebody say my victory. Brother Srillo goes on, he put it on a plaque. I want to encourage you, keep the word of God in front of you night and day he told joshua meditate in my word day and night and you will prosper i want to congratulate you for connecting again to this facebook live it is one way that you can keep the word of god keep thus saith the lord in front of you brother Srilo, the lord spoke to him and said your victory somebody say my victory is keeping your eyes on the bigness of your God and his ability because he has promised. Somebody say, I'm under promise today. He has promised to take you step by step by step, not all at once. You see, that's what this week is all about miracle power living yes god is a god that does supernatural instantaneous miracles we need them we thank god for them but he's also a god that wants to show himself strong 24 hours a day seven days a week he has promised to take you step by step god is with you in your next step my brother god is with you in your next step my sister not all at once, but step by step, just like those three lepers. They said, are we just gonna sit here and die? Or are we gonna get up and make a step? I wanna encourage you, this week is all about you taking your next step and each step will be a miracle. I love how Brother Srilo reminded us what God spoke to Moses when he said, why do you keep crying out to me? Get up and get moving. And that's what this week is all about. Well, it's a joy today to reconnect with this incredible school of ministry, miracle power living. I want you to join me as Brother Srilo takes us into an impartation of faith over fear. Somebody join me in saying thank God for his servant, Dr. Morris. Cirillo. What do you see? What do you see when you look at the circumstances of your life? Why so many of us stumble and why so many of us fall is because we are looking at our natural circumstances you're looking at your financial conditions. They're going to be hindrances to you if you're going to put your eyes on those circumstances. 
If you're looking at your physical body with cancer or tuberculosis or paralyzed arm or leg or high blood pressure or stomach disorder or heart trouble, if you're going to look at your physical condition, if you're going to look at the natural, it's going to be a hindrance to you. The servant Gehazi, when he saw the circumstances of the enemy surrounding the house of his master, his heart was struck with fear. My God, he says, what shall we do? Now there's a difference, brother, in shouting, my God, what shall we do? And shouting, thank God for what you have done. Big difference. circumstance but when you have spiritual sight you don't see the sickness you see past that into the provision of the healing power that's why it's so important that we understand the basis because remember, we said yesterday that the basis is not a doctrine. It's not a theology. It's not the teaching of some theological seminary. But our basis is not the theology of man. Our basis is not the concepts of man, what they think about God or what has been passed down to us by any church, be it the Catholic church, or be it the Methodist church, or be it the Presbyterians, or be it the Baptists. You can't help what people think. Don't get your mind filled and cluttered with the ideas and the concepts of man. You say, Brother Shula, I've got to know what to believe. If I don't hear somebody and I don't follow them, I don't know what to believe. I'll tell you, brother, what to believe. Just accept it, because God's not stupid. He's not ignorant. He's not a manipulator. He says what he means, he means what he says, and he doesn't need a theologian to twist it and turn it around and shove it in a Peace. 
It's the absence of fear from within our beings that gives us the spiritual ability to move forward in faith regardless of our circumstances. I'm gonna tell you something today, I really don't care what you're facing. If you are one with the God of signs and wonders and miracles, I don't care what you are facing, brother. You're not looking at those circumstances. You're not trying to assess your position. You're not trying to evaluate where you are. Christians only see as far as their problems. And then our problems come and crush us. It's easy when we become caught in that cycle of defeat. It's easy. Go ahead, I have counsel with the best of them. It's easy when you're caught 
in that cycle of defeat to forget that our God is a supernatural God. It's true, whoever wrote that song, he holds the world in his hands. of this sixth chapter. Oh Lord, open his eyes so he may see. Apostasy. 
And when it seems like the voice of God is not being manifested. But this is not that time. We have had periods of that from the time of the early church till now. But this is not one of those times now. This is God's end time, harvest time, where God is manifesting himself. Say the word manifest. manifest. And put this in your spirit, this word harvest right here. Harvest is the time of the greatest manifestation. I don't think you got that. Not when you put the seed in the ground. Not when you plant. Not when you cultivate the ground. Not when it shoots forth and begins to grow or comes through what we call that process, that period of maturing. Not even when the corn or the tomato or whatever it is that you're going to harvest ripens. It's not the planning time. It's not the maturing time. It's not the ripening time. But it's the harvest time that is the time of the greatest manifestation. Because when it's harvest time, you partake of it. You actually receive it. You get it. This is harvest time. Somebody tell me what time it is. the time for God to once again deal with his people through signs and wonders and miracles. It is harvest time. God has always dealt with his people through signs and wonders. God destroyed the earth and every living thing in the earth except a man and those that escaped with him in the ark by the name of Noah. And God promised Noah that he would never again destroy the earth through a flood. And to confirm this promise, what did he do? Write him down something on a piece of paper? Gave him a sign. God told Noah, Genesis 9, 12 through 13, this is the sign of the covenant. I am expecting God. I am expecting God's supernatural provision for his end time people exactly as he manifested himself under the covenant with his people called Israel. But only in a greater, more stupendous supernatural way of the manifestation of the very glory that God is himself. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. God told Noah, this is the sign of the covenant which I am making between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all successive generations. I will set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a see me it shall be for a sign. It shall establish a covenant between 
me and the earth. I will never again destroy the world by a flood. Abraham, God manifested himself to him through a Simeon, through a sign, everybody say sign, sign. and to confirm the promise that God gave to Abraham in Genesis 15. 17 through 18. You know, it's a strange thing, but it's true. God made a promise to Abraham, and then Abraham came to God and he said, What sign or what will you give me that I'll know that this is going to come to pass? What is it that you're going to do so I'll know it? Yeah. Now, I want us to put this deep into our spirit this morning. This was not the lack of faith on Abraham's part. God tells us to come to him. He tells us to reason with him. It was not a lack of faith in the heart of Abraham that said, by what means shall I know that this is going to come to pass? It wasn't a lack of faith at all. Why? Because this is the way God deals with his people through signs and wonders and miracles. Genesis 15, 17, Abraham wanted the sign, God gave him a sign. He manifested his presence peculiarly through a flaming torch and a smoking oven. And God passed between the pieces of the sacrifice of this offering. And God walked through the pieces of that offering. He said, Abraham, this is your sign. And God entered into an everlasting blood covenant that bound him and Abraham together forever. God chose to reveal himself to Moses through a sign. Can you see Moses out there in the wilderness? <laughs> Can you see him on Mount Sinai? You see him out there tendering his father-in-law's sheep? What a sight. All of a sudden, he sees a thorn bush crackling and burning. Exodus 3.3, 3, he said, I'll go over. And he said, I'm going to see this strange sight. Oh, Lord, I'd give anything to be there, wouldn't you? He said, why the bush doesn't burn? And when he got there, he saw a supernatural manifestation. You say to me, Brother Shalom, what was it? 
It was the divine presence of the glory of God, but it was more than that. It was the literal angel of the covenant, Jesus Christ, the pre-incarnated Son of God who manifested himself to Moses. How did God get Moses' attention? God want to deal with us as his children through the words of somebody oh that's about all we got brother walk into our lovely churches please when I say these things I don't mean to be critical please don't take them wrong but how many of you know if we are going to manifest what God has planned for us, we have got to have something more. Now, if you want to, you can walk into the church of your choice. Go ahead on Sunday morning. Help yourself if you want to. And you can just sit down Sunday after Sunday. Go ahead, help yourself if you want to. And sit like a bump on a log. Help yourself if you want to. The music is wonderful. The choir is wonderful. The preaching is nice. I didn't say it was wonderful. <laughs> some of it is. Thank God we've got some great, wonderful preachers. But you can go ahead through these motions if you want to help yourself. And then get up after it's all over and shake everybody's hand and say, Oh, brother, oh, sister, oh, isn't that wonderful? Wasn't that marvelous? Wasn't that great? Oh, we had such a nice time. I hope you'll come to my house Sunday or maybe next week. We'll have tea together. And then you go through the humdrum routine of a week that brother is so boring. Some of you can't wait to die. Sure, that's the only exciting thing you got to look forward to, brother, when you're gonna go home to be with Jesus and get rid of this boring life. Got nothing to look forward to except getting up and going through the routine, going to bed, getting up and going through the routine, going to bed. Come on, don't say amen, say ouch. I believe God's got something more for us than that. enough presence about him Exodus 3 4 he said here I am I wonder if he knew who he was saying here I am to <laughs> no he didn't it wasn't until now get this brother it wasn't until God used the sign to identify himself Exodus 3 5 God said don't come any closer it's far enough take the sandals off your feet the place where you're standing is holy ground
will use signs and wonders and manifestations of his supernaturalism to identify himself. Say, God has always dealt with his people through signs and wonders. Well, praise the Lord. Somebody say, I am one with the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. Father, I thank you for my brother today that is watching from the nations of the world. I thank you for my sister today. Lord, I thank you that your word does not return unto you void, but it accomplishes the thing whereunto you send it. Father, I thank you your word has fallen upon good soil today. God, I thank you that we are not the tail, but we are the head. God, I thank you that you promised every step would be a miracle. Now, God, I ask for my brother, my sister today that is weary in well-doing. God, I ask for your strength to be made perfect in their weakness. God, I ask that they would mount up today with wings like an eagle. They would run and not be weary. God, that your miracle working power, your supernatural presence my brother, my sister, I feel the presence of God literally surrounding you right where you are. There's somebody right now, the tears are beginning to come down your face. That is the healing, forgiving, peace, presence of an incredible supernatural God that loves you before you were even formed in your mother's womb. He knew you, he ordained you. Somebody say, I am one with the God of miracle signs and wonders. I can't wait tomorrow as we continue. God gave me a promise. He said, this week, I'm gonna take my people to a place they've never been before. Stay connected to this Facebook page. Invite somebody, invite your pastor, invite your friends, invite somebody that needs to know God like they've never known him before. Listen, take advantage of the opportunity to get this full message, the miracle book, how you can live in a rhythm of miracles, signs and wonders. Brother Cirillo shares the five most important things that he has ever learned from the word of God that has enabled him. I just walked past his office, the glory of God upon him, the miracle presence of God upon him, 75 years in the ministry. I didn't say 75 years of age this October. And don't forget to wish Brother Strillo a happy Father's Day. It's coming in just a few weeks here, June the 20th in the United States. And then in October, he'll celebrate his 89th birthday but he has discovered a secret this is a man that doesn't just live from miracle to miracle but he literally lives in the presence of a miracle working god and that presence is upon you and brother Cirillo shares the five things that he has learned from the word of god that has enabled him to walk in this rhythm of miracles. It's our gift, it's Brother Cirillo's gift for you that are joining every day on Facebook Live. And when you request that, you'll also get a copy of the Legacy Center magazine, free download. I'm standing in front of the hotel right now. In just two weeks, June the 24th, this hotel will reopen you can see the link right on the Facebook page. We can't wait to welcome you to 
your Legacy International Center. The entire grounds will open July 1st. The hotel will open June 24th. If you'd like to make a reservation, go to LegacyResortAndSpa.com. The link is there on your page. July 1st, the entire grounds will open. This September, we will be in Orlando, Florida, September 4th to the 7th for the Worldwide School of Ministry. Many of Brother Cirillo's precious friends will be joining him, Pastor Benny Hinn, Tommy Barnett, Io, I will be there. Brother Cirillo, Sister Cirillo will be there live and in person. We'll tell you more about it in the days to come, but mark your calendar now, October 4, excuse me, September 4 to 7. Brother Cirillo's birthday is October 2nd. And then here at Legacy in the month, the first week of October, we'll be having a Feast of Tabernacles. We'll tell you a little bit more about that. And then the great Legacy dedication will be in January of 2021, January 2nd to the 6th, 2021. We'll officially inaugurate and dedicate the Legacy Center to the glory of God. Now, Legacy is opening July 1st, but we'll have the great dedication just heard this past weekend from Pastor Joel Osteen. Joel said to tell Morris and Teresa, I'm gonna get on my plane January 3rd, not his plane, but he's gonna get on a plane January 3rd after his service that morning in Houston. And he's going to come and be with Morris and Teresa. We're gonna have a very special service every day, January 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th. But Joel Osteen, you're the first that are hearing it, will be with us here for a great dedication service, January 3rd. So lots of exciting things are happening. We'll keep you updated. But I tell you what, the most exciting thing that's happening is what God is doing in your life. It's what God is releasing into your ministry. Yes, I said your ministry. I don't care who you are right now. You are a full-time minister. Somebody say, I am not what the devil says I am, but I am what God says I am. And I am stepping into my end time destiny. That's what this Facebook Live is all about. Can't wait to reconnect tomorrow, invite somebody, share it with somebody else. We'll see you tomorrow on Live from Legacy. Until then, this is Greg Morrow on behalf of Morris and Teresa Cirillo, reminding you, number one, that God said not to look at the bigness of your need, but to look at the bigness of your God and His abilities. And to know this, that he will take you, he has promised to take you, just like the lepers that were sitting outside the gates of Samaria. And they said, if we don't change what we're doing, if we don't do something a little bit different, we're gonna die. So they began to make a move. And I want you to know when you begin to make a new move, God will go before you and step by step, not all at once, but step by step, each step will be a miracle. We'll see you tomorrow on Live from Legacy in Jesus' name. One of the greatest needs we have in the world today is for peace to reign inside the homes of the people, even here in my own country, the United States of America. Where do you find this anointing that brings peace into your heart, in your mind, most of all, into your relationships, in your family? I know the desperate cries of mothers for children, for drugs. You can find the help you need today 
by calling my helpline. 24 hours a day, I have live prayer partners ready to pray with you. Release the peace of God into your home. Don't waste a moment longer. Call right now.